All right. Hello, I'm Craig Bowman. I'm part of the Grands Digital Communications team. And you all know the Grands Executive Director, Ms. Maureen Patton. Hi, Maureen. Hi there, Craig. <laughs> so Maureen and I are thrilled to be joined by the one and only Texas's own Jason Williams. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm good. I am good. I'm better than I deserve to be. <laughs> Considering my history, I am better than I deserve to be. I'm good. So let me start by saying Happy New Year. And what have you all been up to this last 10 months as we've been under this COVID oh, pandemic? Lord, there are claw marks on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, you know, it, it is so weird with the, the COVID thing. We're going to look back on it someday and realize what we got. It cut back on unwanted company. <laughs> it's really cut back on that drop-in neighbor that you really didn't want to hurt her feelings. <laughs> She's home with a towel wrapped around her head, you know. And we have an Asian son, so that'll scare anybody. Up. <laughs> you know, you know. So, <laughs> but. Uh, no, it's been a lot of writing, a lot of reading. We've been working with our son who uh, is special needs and uh, he's, he's learning typing and cursive writing and playing the piano and reading music. Wow. A, a lot of things that, uh, that the experts said he'd never be able to do. And that's all happened while we've been home during COVID. So it's, we have accomplished a lot. This, this piece that I'm gonna be doing soon uh, got created you know, um, I've written a ton of essays, about a third of which are totally libelous. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just practicing. <laughs> so, Jason, you're talking about your new piece, which is I, I Saw the Lights, which we're all uh, excited about. And that's what we're going to talk about. Maureen, when you first heard about it, you just had to have it virtually, had to present it to your audiences. Why is that? Well, you know, it's, it's clear from this conversation that when Jason's around, all you do is laugh. Every time Jason would come up to my office when he would come to the theater and we would sit and just talk and I'd be laughing the whole time. If we could bottle Jason and send him out there, it, it would be good medicine for everybody. And, and like Jason, you know, we've been doing a lot. We've been closed since March 13th. We have done some construction projects that we were gonna cram into a little bitty window and instead we've taken our time. Uh, and, and we've been managing, you know, as we go along and I'm very grateful for that. I've maintained my staff. Uh, we did get a PPP loan, uh, and that is, is enormously helpful. We have had lovely people who have, uh, donated more than their usual amount of money to help get us through. And that's what we've done. But Jason and I talked about, I see the, I saw the lights years ago when it was sort of a, a germ, you know, in his head somewhere. And, and I read just the other day, Jason, that there are more UFO sightings going on right now than there have been in years. And I thought, how timely is this? <laughs> You know, because you knew all along that this was going to happen. And, and I love the characters. I, you know, I know them. We've yep. laughed about it before. I think all of us have family members who, who are residents of Tuna. And, yep. uh, and we know them and love them. And, uh, and so that's, that's the way it is. So, of course, Jason's, uh, Jason's first performance here was in the spring of 1991. Okay, this was Greater one of my questions. I was curious about that. Great. In 1991, and he has been here every year since. Oh, wow. And sometimes more than once in a year. And we have premiered two of the tuna shows here. My and favorite, then when... My favorite space to perform in. Yeah, I, well... Very special I've, place. I've played... Keep, keep that in the interview, Craig. No, <laughs> <favorite place. laughs> no edits yet, Maureen. I've played, it, played palaces, and I've played toilets <laughs> and the grand the grand opera house it, I, it is just my favorite place to work uh it is as comfortable for the actors as it is um for everyone else so earlier this week i was talking to jason and he told a funny story about maureen which i just am still laughing about can you share that one jason yeah <laughs> We were performing in Galveston. I'm trying to remember which show it was. It might have been the foreigner. 
But oh, I, it could have been. Could have been. It could have been, but I think it was one of the tuna plays. And Galveston had a blackout, which they kind of tend to do. And, you know, people are lining up outside, and all of a sudden the theater is dark, dark, and they won't let anybody in. And we see Maureen take off in this big old car like she's just knocked off her first 7 on 11. <laughs> 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 it looked like an escape from a crime. You have never seen anything like it. And she found the electricity people working somewhere and she blocked them in. Oh and said, if I don't get lights, nobody gets lights. And we had a show. We they, did. They yeah. got and I, I literally, I stopped and they were up on the pole or whatever. And I said, I couldn't get any of my people with the electric company, you know, I was calling them and doing whatever. And so finally in total frustration, I jumped in the car and off I went driving around, finding where somebody had a, a truck. And I told them what was going on. And I said, I've got a sold out show. I have people lined up on the sidewalk and we can't let them in the building. And they said, we'll take care of that. And I went back to the theater and I started telling all the people in line, I said, they're working on it. We're going to get you in just as soon as possible. And by golly, the yeah. lights came on. We did the show. We got everybody in there. It was Two insane. Late. Two minutes late. Everything went up. Yeah. That's crazy. No time for chit chat backstage. Get on. You know. <laughs> Only in a small town can you pull that off. That's so true. You I mean, know, it is really turned down with mafia connections. <laughs> <laughs> in a fast car. All right. So. Yeah. Maureen got the, the on the phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maureen got the lights back on that night. What can uh, audiences expect for I saw the lights? What 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 do you say about well, that? I saw the lights is different and it's it's similar to so much work I've done and yet it's different because um, it isn't satire. It isn't it isn't taking a situation and uh, and embellishing it and making it you know, uh, dealing with an issue and making it crazier than it really is, which is hard to do these days. And, you know, it's been like that way for a decade now. It's been real hard to do satire. Sure. And, um, but I didn't want to do satire. I wanted to deal with the people. I wanted to deal always with their humor, but with their frailty, with their humanity, with their differences. Some have plenty of money, some have little money. Some are, you know, working class. Some are counterculture. You know, got a great character that I love um, named Sandy. And she moved to Lubbock from Connecticut because she hated trees. She had grown up in heavily wooded areas and she hates trees. <laughs> she hates them and she doesn't trust them. <laughs> she says they're like nature's sorority girls. <laughs> They know they'll never be anything more than box elders. <laughs> and they do their best to block out the stars. And, and then there's another character who is a hippie who moved to, uh, he moved to Lubbock. He was a California hippie who grew up a Mormon, but he ended up in LA and fell in love with a girl, a hippie girl who decided that she was a Comanche in another life. And she decided to move back to Lubbock and retake the motherland. And he says, she was so good in the sack. I had no choice. I had to go. <laughs> I had to go. Uh, there is a, a wonderful cowboy character that I truly love, uh, who is afraid of water for very good reasons. He had a very traumatic experience with water and a water moccasin and a girlfriend and he, he hadn't been able to take a tub bath in 10 years. He has, it has to be showers. <laughs> uh, have a beautician that is the wisest, wisest soul in town, which beauticians often are. And she went through a change when she saw the UFOs because she said, when I saw the UFOs, so I didn't know if it was God or something from another world or what it was, but uh, I knew that I felt as insignificant as a single grain of sand, and I loved that feeling. And I also realized that I could never be mean again. And that's a real detriment when you're a beautician in Lubbock, Texas, when you can't be mean. <laughs>
Well, I personally can't wait to meet all these characters. Let's not give it all away, but I know there are nine of them. So There are nine of them, and they're wonderful. I love them. And uh, we had a wonderful time putting it together. I perform as myself in my clothing, but we did two days of photo shoots where we costumed and made up the characters. So they are all those ages, all those types, and we project them and bring them back and forth. And it, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a labor of love. And we, and we found work for a whole lot of people, which doesn't, hadn't been happening in our business. And we, we, we probably hired 20 people to get this thing up. And, uh, and it shows, it looks really good. And it's, it's just gonna be fun. We just want people to sit home and enjoy you know, sit home and enjoy, and then go out and look for some UFOs because they're out there. I know that supporting artists is important to you, Maureen, and, and the Absolutely. whole team at the Grand, if you want to talk about that. Yeah, it's it's been uh, one of the hardest things has been, uh, as you know, Craig, and you know, Jason, we've lost some of our agents uh, because there, there are whole businesses that are either shutting down or cutting back so much. And, and the artists are without work unless we do something like this uh, and we involve them in some way. And I think, you know, I've said to so many people in, in different times, so many times that this is a huge industry. And, you know, people forget that the uh, arts and entertainment industry is larger than even all of professional sports put together in terms of wow. the economic impact that we have. So just think about that and think about how devastating something like this is. And, um, but we are also a very close knit family. As large as this industry is, we are a close knit family. And I have had agents call me and artists call me just to check on how we're doing. And, and we do the same thing. We reach out, we want to make sure that every, everybody's okay and that they're safe, that they're well. And uh, we have lost some people, we've lost some, marvelous people uh, in our communities and, and at large, you know. Um, so that's, that's important. It's so important for all of us to just get back. And even if we get back and we practice social distancing and we see 200 people in this thousand seat auditorium, it's at least coming back yes. uh, with, with live theater. Yes, it is. And Jason will perform for 200 people, of course. Oh, absolutely. We had a plan. You know, we thought we, 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 were, gonna open. we, we were, were going to open in January. He was going to come. He was going to yeah. do the show. I had two different shows. And then that surge hit and everything had to be scrapped and you start over again. And that's when we really started looking uh, more closely at the, the streaming, uh, what? what it is. It's and it is happening in January. So there it, you go. And, and it, it, was, it was fascinating putting it together because it was like learning to walk. Mm. It was, I was very insistent that it looked like a play, that it not let, you know, we had three cameras, but we weren't gonna look like a film and I didn't want it to look like a film. And, we, and so it looks like a stage performance, just that the audience is at home. Yeah. They're at home. But, but it was, uh, we shot it in Austin at the State Theater. And, uh, and again, a lot of old friends were there working on this project. So that made you feel really good. You looked around and saw people that had survived. And, um, and that you, you weren't sure we would ever work together again at one point. And it's coming back. Well, it's, it's, coming, back. it's yeah. coming back on Friday night, January 29th at 7 o'clock. There are two ticket options, okay? Just a general ticket. But you can also get a VIP ticket where you get some behind the scenes stuff with this very talented man right here. So why wouldn't you want to do that? That's the one I bought. Um, so all you do is go to thegrand.com and all the information is there. Maureen and Jason, thanks so much for doing this. Any Thank last you. words? It's a pleasure. It's so much fun to be laughing with Jason. I've missed it. Just it's a kick. I need to get back to Galveston. Galveston, I lived in New Orleans uh, for years in the French Quarter, and Galveston is like her crazy little sister. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She's just as much fun. She just <laughs> I love it. Let's, let's end it there. Yeah. You stay safe and healthy, and above all, let's keep making art. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. okay. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.